Hello Internet, I'm Guy. These are some hinges I made for my friend John in a video a few videos ago. And a, a woman saw them and said, gee, I wonder if you could fix these broken hinges on her antique table. And so I said I'd give it a shot. So these are the pictures she sent me and here's what I'm going to do. I got the hinges and polished up one of the synths that were hinges here with the Scotch-Brite wheel so I can see what's going on. And as you can see, there's a broken link in both cases, and that's a pin that I drilled out of this hole on this one. The holes are opened out a little bit so the pins can mushroom out when they're pounded in at both sides, and that causes a better fit and prevents them from coming out, of course. So uh, notice that the holes are all uneven. This is clearly handmade with a file and a hacksaw. I mean, very primitive uh, fabrication. And also, I'm curious to know how that slot was made. You see, this is a wood rough cutting key tool here. And they wouldn't have had that back in the day. And it doesn't look like it was done that way. So I really don't know how they hollowed out that little section for the hinge. It's really interesting to me. So clearly the job entails uh, not replacing the large brass parts, but just the links here and the little pins. And so I'm going to have to make those. I'm going to make the link out of stainless steel because it'll be a lot stronger and it won't break out of there. But this is how they work, obviously. They fold up like that, and this one would have gone like that. So let's jump in and I'll figure out how I'm going to make these little parts here that connect the two hinge bodies. My first step is to drill out the pin at just one end to drill out the mushroomed part that is bent outwards and flared out into the top edge there. I'm using a spotting drill which is perfect for this and I'm just going to go in very gently just to remove that mushroomed end of the pin. So hopefully then I can push the pin out and then find a way to replace it. So I'm just tiptoeing up to it. I don't want to remove any more metal than is necessary. Uh, so I'm just being very cautious about this. Notice I also have a centering drill there on the side, and I thought I would use that, and I decided not to. So now I'm using a drill bit and, and using the mill as an arbor press to push out the hinge. And you can see it's mushroomed out on the bottom there. That's what we want to do eventually. So notice that these being handmade are completely different dimensions, and I, I don't think it matters a whole heck of a lot. Uh, it's just the hole spacing that is important. So again, I'm using my spotting drill into a sheet of stainless steel that I've mounted up in my milling machine. And I'm just getting that lined up, and then I'm going to drill the actual hole dimension that I need. Stainless steel is tough stuff, so it, it takes a lot of lubrication and some care to drill through it properly. Going in and going to bust all the way through. There we are. It's getting pretty hot. That's a good clean hole. So now I'm going to move over to uh, match the exact spacing of the holes in the original hinge, which I measured to within a thousandths or two of an inch uh, spacing. That's the spotting drill again. And the regular drill. Let's put some lubrication in there. This is high sulfur uh, cutting fluid, basically. Lots of fluid. I don't want to overheat that stainless steel. And then I'm going to go back in with the spotting drill and put a slight chamfer, which will help the hinge pin push through, because I want it to be a very tight fit. And so I'm going to have, have to hammer the, the hinge in, the new hinge pin that I make. So it should guide in there a little bit more easily. So there's the old and the new parts. I cut out that new part uh, on the milling machine by just milling it out. And then I'm using a jeweler's hand clamp to hold it up against the grinding wheel to make that radius. This is a really neat tool. I really enjoy using it. And I knew that when I bought it, I would find lots of uses for it. So grinding horizontally and then just cleaning it up to make it look nicer, uh, get rid of the grinding marks. And so there it is. If you're enjoying the video, please like and subscribe, and you can support me on Patreon using the link below. This tool is used for holding rings when jewelers are working on them and so forth. So there's the first one, and there's two of them again. I cut it out like that with the on the milling machine, just two cuts, basically with an eighth inch milling cutter. Now that hole right there, I drilled out to one eighth of an inch originally, thinking I needed to drill that all the way out. Um, so that's a bit bigger than the other two holes, so I'm going to use smaller brass rod on these two holes and then a small and a big one on the other hinge. So now the brass rod I have 
doesn't fit. I tried filing it down just a little bit and I realized no, I've got to machine this brass rod down a little bit. So I'm taking about one and a half to two thousandths of an inch off the radius of this rod. The weird wiggling in the video has to do with my camera vibrating strangely while I was shooting this, so try and ignore that. That round nose cutter makes a really nice finish on brass, by the way. So now let's see if it fits. I want it to be a snug fit. I think that's a little too snug, so I'll probably have to take another half a thou off. Here we go again. I'm speeding up the footage here just to save some time. And now I'm going to part that piece off. Oh, and I forgot. I need to just put a bit of a taper on it so that it'll go in when I hammer it in. And there we are, the first pin. So, of course, I need to make two of these eventually. I mean, four of them all together, two per hinge. So this is a big five-pound hammer on my uh, anvil here. And you can see it it's going through, so I'm just going to keep pounding on it now. And both ends should mushroom, uh, and that's the whole point of these hinges. That's how they work. You can see I already have one installed in the other hinge there. Uh, I lost audio on this, otherwise you'd hear that obnoxious pounding sound. So now I'm going to grind off the heads of those pins to make them flush with the hinge body. And here we are. Those are the parts that I've replaced. And here's how the hinges work. So it seems like a relatively short video, but I spent hours doing this and figuring it out. So now I need to restore them to their antique finished look. And I'm going to be using this Brownells Oxfo Blue, which is a gun blowing chemical. It's a, uh, I guess it's an acid of some kind that leaves an oxide finish on the metal. So I just uh, dab a little bit onto a cloth and wipe it on. And several applications, uh, usually two or three or four applications, depending on how dark you want to go. You could take this brass all the way to full on black if you wanted to. Gun blowing is what makes uh, guns look that dark, uh, blackish looking finish on the gun barrels and so forth. And with brass, it has a similar effect, as you can see. This is my second pass going on now, and I think that's, that's quite sufficient. I hope my customer will be happy. I think it should match in and go right back into the table or whatever it is. Uh, look just fine.